Hello, my name is Andreas Langner and I'm working for the Joint Research Center. My talk today is about forest degradation derived by a newly developed Sentinel-1 change detection approach with a case study in the Prey Lung Wildlife Sanctuary in Cambodia. My co-author is Silvia Carboni. The Prey Lung Wildlife Sanctuary is situated in the heart of Cambodia and is one of the last lowland rainforest ecosystems of continental Southeast Asia with evergreen, semi-evergreen, semi-deciduous, as well as deciduous forest landscapes. The sanctuary is about 430,000 hectares large and has been established in May 2016. In the vicinity of the sanctuary, more than 200,000 people, mainly indigenous Kui, depend on the forest for their livelihoods. Civil society organizations such as the Preilang Community Network, Network PLCN, patrol the forest to prevent illegal logging. However, they have been restricted to enter the sanctuary by the government since February last year, so remote sensing-based monitoring becomes more important now. What are, what are the challenges of remote sensing-based monitoring? Well, forest disturbances can be large-scale as these deforestation patches, which are quite easy to be detected from a remote sensing point of view. However, they can also be small-scale, such as the establishment of logging roads or the extraction of single trees that open the forest canopy on a small scale. So the problems are the small scale as well as the weakness of the signal. And often the signal <clears throat> is only detectable over a short period of time due to fast vegetation regrowth or the frequent cloud coverage in the tropics. This is mainly an issue for optical based monitoring approaches. And these monitoring approaches also should differentiate between natural phenol phenological changes such as um, leaf shedding due to seasonality and the actual disturbance events. So based on the finding of PLCN members, the remote sensing based monitoring approach has to be sensitive to detect single tree extractions as well. Here we see a screenshot of the forest canopy disturbance monitoring tool, the FCDM tool, as it has been implemented in Google Earth Engine. On the right hand side, you can enter various parameters. On the left hand side, you see the the uh, mapping result in red color, the detections of forest canopy disturbances. The tool consists of two monitoring approaches, one optical based using 30 meter Landsat and 10 meter Sentinel-2 data, and one radar based approach using 10 meter Sentinel-1 radar data. The algorithm of the optical based approach has been described in this 2018 paper. Here you have a link to the paper as well as a link to the script, the Google Earth Engine script, which allows to run this FCDM optical approach. The FCDM optical approach has also been implemented um, in the CPAL platform of the FAO. Right now we're working on a publication for the FCDM radar approach. And after that, the Google Earth Engine script will also be freely available. So what's the concept of these two FCDM methodologies? Basically, it's a change detection approach, which analyzes the canopy condition of an earlier reference in a more recent analysis scene, and um, um, calculates the difference between both of them in order to see what changes happened. That's the very basic idea. However, FCDM does more than this. Instead of looking at a single point in time, it looks at periods that are defined by the user. So they can be several months, but up to one year or even longer. And what happens is that all available scenes of the selected sensors are analyzed for their canopy condition and are accumulated eventually in such a way that the most open canopy condition is remembered. This is done for the reference period as well as for the analysis period. And these two intermediate results are then compared with each other in order to derive the change. So for a given pixel location, if we, for example, have no canopy opening during the reference, but an opening in the analysis period, we get a disturbance event. The opposite will deliver us a regrowth event. And then we have the case of either no canopy opening in both periods, or both periods show at the same place an opening. In both cases, we get a no change event. So it's important to understand that FCDM allows us to derive activity data. And activity data means um, data of canopy change that happened during the analysis period as compared to an earlier reference period. Now, 
let's have a look at the Pre Lang Sanctuary, which you can see here in white color, the borderline. And um, I superimposed um, data from Global Forest Watch. These are Global Forest Watch glo uh, forest loss data from the years 18 till 20 in the colors um, 18 yellow, 19 orange, and 20 red, as well as the 2020 GLAD alerts. You have blue dots which refer to field plots from the same years which were taken during PLCN patrols and reflect um, uh, the detection of um, illegal or selective logging events. What you can see is that basically the, the main impact is outside or at the fringes of, these, um, of the sanctuary. However, the inner part of the sanctuary, where also here the detections are, the Global Forest Watch does not deliver much data here. And here, for example, for this subset area, it's shown here in larger, we see here a road structure detected by Global Forest Watch. However, most of these findings from the field plots, from the field visits, are not reflected by the data. The situation, however, changes when adding FCDM data from the same years with the same color coding. Now it becomes clear that the, the data is backed up by the, by the observations in the field. There's an idea of eventually incorporating these FCDM alerts in a so-called Prelang app. It's an application from a smartphone device which allows these people to access the data in the field. And the very idea is to have eyes in the sky that help the field on the ground. A 2019 FCDM radar dataset has also been um, validated and we found an overall accuracy of more than 96% with a user accuracy of 94 and a producer accuracy of 79%. This means that even though this FCDM radar approach is able to detect very small scale changes. It is still a conservative monitoring approach. And here, the comparison of FCDM with some existing monitoring approaches from Global Forest Watch. On the right hand side, we have here the overview. We look at this area in larger here on the left and in the, in the middle. And um, on the left hand side, we have the existing Global Forest Watch data. And here we have the Global Forest Watch and the FCDM data on top of each other. So it, it's clear that the existing data only detects larger scale forest encroachments, but almost no selective logging events, even though we would expect here also some due to these field, um, uh, field plots. The situation totally changes when adding FCDM data. Yeah? Um, now we see there is something going on in these different years. Similar situation here in the central parts along this river, when looking at the uh, Global Forest Watch data alone, we would have a severe underestimation of the illegal selective logging impact in the central parts of Prelang. Not so for the FCDM data, which shows um, it in vicinity of these collected plots, but also you can see clusters um, over the different years. A similar situation again here in the north of the sanctuary with even more selective logging detected by FCDM radar but not detected by the, the um, Global Forest Watch data. So um, here we see uh, um, the, the expansion basically of the illegal logging into the sanctuary well, well like waves in 2018 here in yellow, 2019 further down and 2020 up here. So it's protruding from areas of easier access into the forest. When looking at the disturbed area in, for 2020, the Global Forest Watch data and GLAD alerts give us about 10,000 hectares. While adding SCDM radar, we end up with more than 13,000 hectares, meaning an, an increase in the overall detections by 32%. So what are now my take-home messages for you? On the one hand side, I would like to highlight the good performance of the FCDM radar monitoring approach to detect even very small scale disturbances. And on the other hand side, I would like to highlight how important the detection of these small scale disturbances is because their average biomass is expected to be even higher than the average biomass of a clear cut event. 
simply because they refer to the selection of single, often very large trees. However, this still has to be confirmed. And with my last slide, I would like to thank all members of the Preland Community Network for their efforts to save their forests. And it was their data collected during the field visits which helped us, the remote sensing site, to give the necessary insights into the actual situation on the ground. Thank you very much for listening to me.